maybe you don't know who Jesus really is. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. That's Jesus. Now, of course, I looked it up, and Jesus' name actually means Joshua. It's the same, same word. I know lots of people named Joshua. You can probably come up with three or five people off the top of your head who are named Joshua. So what's so special about this Jesus? This one. It was a common name. Lots of people had it. So what's special about this Jesus? Well, there's two things. Number one, Jesus, he alone is like God. He's the one and only Son, or some versions say the only begotten Son. It doesn't mean that he's the only one that's been born, although that's true. Uh, it just means that he shares God's DNA. He alone is like God. John 14, 9 says, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus Christ says that. It's the same thing as seeing God the Father. And John 1, 1 says, The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus Christ, the Jesus of the Bible, He alone is like God. But number two, he shares an intimacy with God, a mutuality the Father shares with no one else. He knows things about God that you and I could never know. Matthew eleven twenty seven 27 says, No one really knows the Son except the Father, and no one really knows the Father except the Son. They know one another. And Jesus could keep all of that stuff to himself. Just like a kid after, after Halloween, he goes trick-or-treating and he takes all of his candy and he, and he keeps it all to himself and doesn't want to share it with anyone else. All of this great knowledge about God, Jesus could hold it to himself. But instead, he shares it. Christ shares the very best of God with all of us. John 1.18 says, he who exists at the very heart of the Father has made him plain as day. Listen to what Jesus has to say about the Father. Are you listening? Think of it this way. You're a fifth grader studying astronomy. The day you read about the first mission to the moon, you and your classmates pepper the teacher with space travel questions. What does moon dust feel like? One asks. Another, can you swallow when there's no gravity? What about going to the bathroom? The teacher does the best he can, but prefaces most of the replies with, I would guess, or I think, perhaps, how could he know? He's never been there. But the next day, he brings a guest who has. Neil Armstrong enters the room. Yes, the one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, that Neil Armstrong. Now ask your questions, the teacher invites. And astronaut Armstrong answers each one with sureness. He knows the moon. He's walked on it. There's no guessing here. He speaks out of experience. So did Jesus. Jesus knows God, and he wants to share that knowledge with you. Just like uh, hearing an astronaut is better than hearing a teacher talk about outer space, it's better to hear right from Jesus what he has to say, and you know for sure that it's true because he intimately knows God. No one knows God the way Jesus does. He knows the Father has many mansions prepared for us. John 14, 2 says that. He knows that you are worth more than many sparrows. Matthew 10, 31. Jesus says that. He knows that the Father knows what you have need of. Matthew 6, 8 says that. Jesus Christ knows that God will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll never turn from you. Matthew 28, 20 says that. And you know when Christ says it, when Jesus Christ says it, it must be true. It must be true. And, you know, Jesus could have went and just shared this information with, 
with select people, with just the most important people. We talked about the kid with the, with the candy. They might only share their candy, maybe, maybe with their father, maybe with a best friend, but not with a stranger, perhaps. Not with someone that they don't really like. Not with someone who's treated them bad. But Jesus, Jesus invites those who are hungry, those who are needy, those who are weary to come and learn. Every person he invites them to come. We're going to talk about that a little bit more next week during our Free Fall Fun Fest. And we want you to invite everyone you can think of to come to that. Invite them all. And obviously for, for our youth group it's limited from 7th to 12th grade, but anyone in there, whether it's your best friend, whether it's somebody you never talked to, or whether it's somebody that treats you terribly, invite them to come. Invite them to come, just like Christ invites you to come and learn from Him. He says in Matthew 11, 28 and 29, it says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Share, invite people to come next week, just like Christ has invited you to come and learn from him. <laughs> Jesus said, let me teach you, but sometimes I think I'll never learn. When I was a kid, I sang Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, but sometimes I forget all means all. The weird thing is, I understand that Jesus loves the poor people, but it's harder to remember he loves the beautiful people and the ones who seem to have it all. Like Marnie, the new girl in youth group, I didn't talk to her, no one really did. Then one night at youth camp, I heard her crying herself to sleep. I felt awful. The next morning, I made a point to talk to her and found out we had a lot of stuff in common. In fact, she had a lot more struggles than I thought. Bad grades, fighting with her mom all the time, and losing her best friend in a skiing accident. I could tell she felt alone and needed someone to care. I don't know what came over me, but suddenly I got really bold. I told her we don't have to be alone. We can all have a hand to hold. And that God loves everyone, her and me and everyone. Hey, maybe I am learning. Thanks, God. Like Becca said, Jesus loves every one of us. But your life is kind of like this drywall that me and Don hung. I've never done it before, and when I did, I put in all these screws. But every once in a while, you can see a hole. Down here, there's three holes. And uh, if you go over to this side, there's a great big hole right there. And your life is covered with sin. It's not nice and smooth and flush. This drywall's messed up quite a bit because of me. But Christ comes along and he says, I can fix this. Just like this side. This drywall here contains all the same screws. It contains some holes in it. But uh, Justin and Jeff came along and they covered them over. They fixed it. And that's what Christ does. Christ says, I can fix this. In Romans, it says this, Romans 4, 7, Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Christ covers your sins. He fixes it. He says, Zach, let me fix your life. Let me help you handle those problems. Let me show you how to handle that pop quiz that's coming up on Monday. Let me show you how to handle that pesky brother that you have at home. Mm -hmm. Let me show you how to handle those problems you have with your mom. Let me show you why bad things happen to good people. Let me show you how to handle those times when you get angry. Let me show you how to handle life. Let me show you why on earth you're on this earth. Turn to Christ. Give him a chance, just like on the movie we watched, to save a life. When the pastor was saying, give God a try, don't just experiment a little bit and just put a little bit into it. Put your entire life into Jesus Christ. Give him everything, and he'll open up a whole new world for you. Give Christ your life, because he already gave his life for you.